Now let's see the second part of the lecture. Now we have three non cicatricial patch alopecia. The first patient is a round plaque on occipital area. From trichoscopy, we can see many dystrophic hairs, mostly black dots or cadaveric hairs, and many exclamation mark hairs. It's also possible to notice vellus hairs along the lesion. In summary, the presence of many black dots, exclamation mark hairs, and a presence of vellus hairs in a patch alopecia is very suggestive of alopecia reata. Now, in the second case, we have a patch alopecia in a black scalp. So, from trichoscopy, we can see many broken hairs and black dots. There is some vellus hairs and reddish area in the center, resembling an inflammatory acne. Another plague showing more dystrophic hairs, follicular openings, and a large 3D yellow dot. In summary, the findings of an alopecia reata as dystrophic and vellus hairs with the presence of the 3D yellow dots and reddish areas could represent a dissecting cellulitis in a very early and non cicatricial stage of the disease. The third case is an irregular patch alopecia in the central area of the scalp. From trichoscopy, I noticed numerous types of broken hairs in different heights. We can see black dots, flame hairs, brush hairs, and coiled hairs. In addition, we have some exclamation mark hairs in the middle of the scales. So, when we have a chaotic trichoscopy showing many types of broken hairs, in an asymmetric patch of alopecia, we need to think of trichotillomania. But in some cases, we also see some features of alopecia reata as exclamation mark hairs, and we need to take a biopsy in these areas to exclude it. In this case, later on, when the trichotillomania got better, the patient had also a new typical plague of alopecia reata. So, maybe in this time she has had trichotillomania and alopecia reata. Now, the last two cases of diffuse alopecia. The first one, we can see a discrete hair loss in frontal area. So, to diffuse alopecia, we need to compare at least three areas in trichoscopy. The first is in frontal area represented by letter A. Here we can see decreased hair density, many thin hairs and many one unit hair follicles. In vertex area we notice better hair density, more two and three unit hair follicles and also some thin hairs. In occipital area, there is better hair density and less hair diameter variability. In summary, a patient with diffuse hair loss presenting decreased hair density and high hair diameter variability, especially comparing frontal, vertex and occipital areas associated with increased number of one hair unit follicles is suspicious of androgenetic alopecia. Now, the second case, we can see many short hairs along the middle hairline. So, here we will compare the same areas of the previous case. In frontal area, we have a good hair density and few thin hairs. Here in vertex area, we have almost the same hair density and a lot of upright regrowing hairs. 
as here in the occipital area. In summary, in a case with normal hair density, no diameter variability and with numerous upright regrowing hairs, we can make the diagnosis of telogen effluvium alone. But in the majority of the cases, we can see both entities mixed together, making the trichoscopy more challenging. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and thank you for your attention. This is my contact for any question. My best for all. Obrigado, pessoal.